everyone. Welcome again. So in the previous two lessons, we've looked at industrial chemistry, and in particular, soap making. And in this lesson, we're going to look at, well, how does soap actually work in a chemical, in a chemical way? So what does soap actually do? Um, so that's the focus of today's lesson. So hopefully, you'll learn something about the soap that you use every day uh, and how it cleans your hands and whatever else. The first thing we need to talk about is oil and water. And obviously, as you know, oil doesn't mix with water. But the reason, and the reason is because of the, the difference in bond structure. So oil is nonpolar, so it has dispersion forces, whereas water is polar and has hydrogen bonds. So that's why they don't mix, because they're different. But the key issue is that cleaning them makes it very difficult. Cleaning up grease and oil is very difficult because we like to use water to clean things. So for instance, if I spill some sugar on the ground, I can wipe it up with a wet cloth, and it will dissolve in the wet cloth and then be absorbed into the cloth, in the water and be absorbed into the cloth. It makes it easy to clean. Whereas oil will just get pushed around by the water. So that's the, the issue with cleaning grease and other substances like that. So the two liquids are said to be immiscible in contrast to being miscible. However, when water is mixed with soap, it can be used to clean up oil or grease. So soap is the sort of the agent of change and it allows it to allows our um, our water now to clean up oil and grease. So the dissociation of soap, remembering that that soap was that long hydrocarbon chain with that Na head. So when soaps dissolve in water, they dissociate into ions. So here's our soap with just a random doesn't matter how long this R is, it could be 40 carbons long, it could be 10 carbons long, it doesn't really matter. So what happens is that the Na dissolves and goes away as an Na+, and then you're left with this long hydrocarbon chain with a COO negative end. Okay? So it's negatively charged on this end. Now the anion is the cause for soap's cleaning action. The cation has no function, so this cation doesn't do anything. Okay, so the Na doesn't do anything once it's been dissolved. Surfactants. So the fatty acid ion is known as a surface active agent, or surfactant for short. This is because it lowers the surface tension of water. So if you've ever tried this, um, you can actually make little boats and things move really quickly through water by putting a bit of um, detergent there because it kind of breaks the surface tension and lowers it. It is also used uh, it is also a wetting agent as it allows water to combine with oil, grease, and dirt. Okay? Particularly these two, oil and grease. So how does it actually work? The negatively charged head of the soap molecule is polar. Okay? So when the sodium left, it like it was dissolved, it it left behind a, a negatively charged head here. And then the rest of this is nonpolar. Okay? The rest of the the soap molecule is nonpolar. Now the end of the molecule is hydrophilic. So because it's polar, it's it's charged, it it can bond with water. Hence it will dissolve easily in water. It'll try and mix with the water as much as possible. Now this end, the long hydrocarbon end, or the tail, is nonpolar, okay? Because there's no charged sections here and it's all dispersion forces. Now this end of the molecule is hydrophobic, um, so it doesn't like water. It won't bond with water very well. It will not dissolve in water, but tends to bond to non other nonpolar substances due to the dispersion forces. Okay, so it will try and find nonpolar substances to dissolve in. Okay. So here's our soapy water. This is our long chain of our tail. And this is our negatively charged head. And as you can see, it, this negatively charged head tends to bond to, this, to the water molecules through hydrogen bonds. And this long tail end tries to bond with these oil molecules with dispersion forces. Okay? So that's what's happening. So cleaning the grease. Okay? So soap molecules can bind to both polar and nonpolar substances, as we just mentioned. So, you can see here that the, the soap has now bonded to the grease and 
the negatively charged head is exposed to the water. Okay. So when a greasy surface is being cleaned, soap molecules bind to the grease, as you can see. The little tails are stuck in the grease. And when the soapy water is agitated, the grease is removed from the surface in droplets called micelles. Okay? So as you see here, as we shake the water up, we can pull on these negatively charged heads because the water is moving. And then that pull on the heads also pulls the tails, and those tails pull the grease away as well. So you can see they form little droplets. By agitating it, we can form these droplets, and we call them micelles. So if oil, water, and soap are put together and shaken, the oil disperses through the water. Right? The resulting mixture is called an emulsion because they're not dissolved in one another. They just happen to be mixed together. The soap molecules create spheres of negative charge around each oil droplet, so they repel each other. So they form little, like, little balls of negative charge that repel one another. Okay? So hard water. Okay? So here's where Adelaide has a problem. So Adelaide has very hard water, and so soap doesn't quite work as well there as it does here in Sydney. So water that contains many mineral ions, calcium or magnesium, is called hard water. Now, soap doesn't lather properly in hard water. So the soap anions precipitate and form a scum. So here we have Ca2+, plus, plus two of these soap, soap anions, gives you this solid Ca. Okay? And what that looks like is if you have a very positively charged thing here, Okay, so you so you've got this soap molecule here, soap molecule here, calcium ion here. What happens is Okay, so you've got the soap now bonded with the calcium, now bonded with another soap. So all of the charge has been taken out of this system. This is no longer charged. And if it's no longer charged, it will it bond to water? No. So it won't bond to water anymore. So it forms a precipitate here, which means that it can't do its cleaning action because it's already precipitated out as a solid. And so that's why when you have hard water, it makes soap very difficult to clean. Uh, or it, soap doesn't clean as well in hard water because of all these precipitates that form called soap scum. Okay. So that wraps up today's lesson on the cleaning action of soap. Um, so we learn how soap actually works. Uh, it's the interaction of that negatively charged head with the water and the non-polar tail end, which reacts with the grease. And when you agitate it, it pulls the grease apart, forming little spheres of grease, which we call cells. Okay, so we'll move on to the question segment. So firstly, what does hydrophilic mean? So hydro means water, and philic means love. So it's A. It loves water. The ionic end of a soap molecule is hydrophilic. It likes water. So which part of the dissolved soap molecules is responsible for the cleaning action of soap? So D, the cation, usually sodium or potassium, is very quick to dissociate, so it doesn't do anything. So the cation, a metal ion, has no effect on the cleaning process. So the only one is actually the anion, the negative charge. The anion contains a long hydrocarbon chain, allowing it to bind with grease via dispersion forces. That's our answer. Explain why soap does not work properly in the presence of hard water. Include an equation. The metal ions in hard water will form a precipitate with a soap anion and prevent the soap from binding with grease because it's precipitated out. So here's our equation. You get two generalized soap ions here. Plus calcium gives you calcium plus the two generalized soap, uh, and it's a solid. Okay. What is a surfactant? Give an example of a surfactant in your answer. Okay. A surfactant is a substance that affects the surface tension of another substance. So it will either increase or decrease the surface tension of another substance. Soap is a surfactant because when it dissolves in water, it decreases the surface tension and allows the water to mix with non-polar substances. 
Okay, so that's why it's called a surfactant. And when soapy water is used to clean grease, the soap uses more than one type of intermolecular bond to accomplish this. Describe all the bondings in this scenario. So when we use soapy water to clean grease, what's actually happening? Well, there are two important bonds in the process, polar bonds and dispersion bonds. Polar bonding allows the polar end of the soap molecule to bind with the water, and dispersion bonding allows the non-polar end to bind with the grease and dirt. Okay? This means that soap forms bonds with both water and grease, and hence allows the water to remove the grease or to transport the grease somewhere else, or in this case, clean. So that concludes today's lesson on the cleaning action of soap, and it concludes this series on saponification. So hopefully in this series you've learned how soap is made and what are the processes involved, and as well how soap actually works. So in the future lessons we'll be talking about the Solvay process and sodium carbonate. So I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. Thank you.